UK has more mobility scooters than any other country in Europe. Oh, she's a nice one, dear. People who struggle to walk have been freed from the front room and given licence to crisscross the highways and byways at their leisure. All right, all right, go. It is my lifeline. I literally go everywhere on it. The scooter bandwagon has quadrupled in just five years. Wow! It doesn't sound that. Sound that, but it's a colour TV. <laughs> now everyone wants to get on board. I've just noticed the white stick. Gordon, you're going down the wrong way down the street here, look. I'm sorry about that. That's all right. But a backlash is brewing against these supposedly sedate machines. Move that scooter out of way. Good morning, Dylan. My son got hit by one. You were on the road, that was your fault. Well, we wasn't. My son was actually <laughs> on the pavement. Dodgy driving and accidents are on the rise. Oh, oh. And with no compulsory training or even basic traffic laws to keep them in check. So the front of the scooter is completely smashed up. Was that I've just been so good. <laughs> is the mobility scooter revolution veering out of control? I call these God's waiting rooms. Well, you're just waiting, aren't you? <laughs> She'll laugh. <laughs> and we have life again. 58-year-old <laughs> Hazel was diagnosed with chronic lung disease eight years ago. She now struggles to walk more than a few yards. So this is my scooter. Do I need to be worried? Yes, I'd be very worried. <laughs> Morning, ladies. Morning, Nora. Yes, see you. Having a set of wheels has given her the freedom to get out and about and spend money on her four grandkids with a fifth on the way. I want something pretty frilly. Yeah. Now yeah, we've got to have a cardigan, haven't we? It, it is my lifeline. I literally go everywhere on it. But nearly every day, I go out on that scooter. It's just, you know, an absolute lifesaver for me. Ten minutes shopping didn't take long to spend £40, pound, did it? <laughs> Hazel's been on the road for five years, but she's never had any scooter training, so she's still honing her skills. <laughs> I hit a man the other week, but it wasn't my fault. I hit him in bum and he fell forward. And I just said, oh, I'm ever so sorry, sweetheart. Are you all right? And, it, and he were all right about it. It's a very tight fit. When I then put it in there for night, I nearly end up in next door's garden. Told you, I've just hit wall. Hazel is just one of the 330,000 scooter riders across the UK. Their numbers are continuing to grow, but not everyone is happy to see them. They get in your way and they buzz around and you're just walking along and suddenly you're falling over you. them. We hear the noise, you know, the, the beep beep and you know they're coming for you. Yeah. <laughs> Cold baskets, airbags because it basically slows them down when they're too old. There's one there. They go inside the shops, don't they? I don't know how they manage it. Yeah, they just drive along. They don't bother about who's in the way, you know. I mean, one day, one Tuesday, I was down in the summer. It was that busy with mo mobility. I, I went home, I was fed up, trying to dodge them. <laughs> Dodgy driving might be common, but as mobility scooters are technically classed as disability aids, they're exempt from the Road Traffic Act, leaving them free to jostle with cars on the road and pedestrians on the pavement, doing close to as they please. Mobility scooter <laughs> in a smart car? That's incredible. Despite the lack of laws, South Yorkshire police are trying to do something about it. 
Their solution happens on a purpose-built set, complete with streets, shops, and even a post office. <laughs> yeah, that's brilliant, that. That's better. Can go a bit faster? Yeah. I'll turn it up for you. We've developed the Scooter Safe course to give users the chance to learn about the different aspects of manoeuvrability, etc. Whoa, slow down, whoa. Well spotted. They are technically alien to whichever environment they're in because they're not motor vehicles and they're not pedestrians. Well, don't avoid it that much. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, What's happened there? Oh, I bet it. I wouldn't say they're a lethal weapon, but they can cause quite serious injuries. Can I have a whiz run right fast? <laughs> After one too many mishaps, Hazel's decided to drop by to pick up some pointers. Nice and slowly up to that stop sign. So now all I want you to do is to reverse. Hazel, stop you there. Have a good look behind you right now. Yeah. Have a look over the other shoulder. Well, what's that doing there? I put it there. <laughs> so that could have been somebody's legs. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe even a little child that sat there and mum's not paying attention. How does that make you feel? I'd be gutted. Be gutted, wouldn't you? Absolutely. And it's a simple, simple little thing of making sure you're aware of what's around you that avoids that type of thing happening. Yeah. Okay, nice reversing for me. Overall, I would say near unperfect. Move that, please. Just one fault. Just hitting that little girl. But it will let me think now. There are no legal restrictions on who can buy a scooter. Slide in, you're right. Watch that curb edge, Gordon. You got it? Even 84 year old Gordon is keen to ride one. Right, Gordon. I've noticed the white stick. There's no issue with that because. Crazily, there's no real law that says you can't ride it with impaired vision. Yeah. But can I just clarify the extent of your vision problems? It, it's it's uh, just tunnel vision. All I want you to do is to make sure that you're aware of all yeah. around you before around you here. set off yeah. or start moving in any direction. Brilliant. My son brought me because I wanted a scooter. He don't want me to go on scooter and, and do something stupid. That's what he don't want me to do, something stupid. Go around this roundabout for me, Gordon. That's good. Keep around this one, Gordon. You're going down the wrong way down the street here, look. Just reverse up for me. Come back. That's it. OK. I'm sorry about that. That's all right. There is no requirement for anybody to undergo any formal testing. There is no requirement for them to have full 20-20 vision. So you can see the problems that we highlight here. Reverse through the cones and I want you to go across the road, look, in front of that bus, backing into that little garage there. Oh, Gordon, okay. Keep it going backwards now, turn the other way. Hard over, no, the other way, Gordon, stop. Stop, stop, stop. Turn to your right and head on down to the bottom there. Gordon, can I stop you there, mate? What are these traffic lights saying? Yeah. Yeah? So you're not looking again? My father had a stroke a couple of years ago, which has reduced his sight. My father thinks his sight's improved, and, we'll and part of bringing him here today is to assess how much that's improved and whether they feel he's safe to use, use a scooter. Um, he's 84, he's quite stubborn. He, you know, he doesn't listen to his son or his daughters. Um, so we hope he would take some advice from, from uh, a higher authority. So the decision is yours, really, whether you feel you're safe enough. Because we don't say whether you're right or wrong. We no, just give you no. the, the no, skills yeah, to be aware. That, yeah. What might be more beneficial for you to do, Gordon, is to come back on another session and practice some more. Yeah. Britain's hundreds of thousands of mobility scooters are beginning to get under people's feet. 
According to the Department for Transport, serious collisions are almost always the fault of the driver. Hello. I, could I have a little chat with you? One woman making a stand is charity shop manager Karen Jeffson. Did you have any training when you brought your mobility scooters? Yes. Well, well it was, it was, it was around the corner, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Because I think more people are going to be using these, so what I want to see is yeah. more people having proficiency tests. Have you had an accident yourself in it? Have you uh, ever bumped anyone? or? Only my daughter. Right. <laughs> she don't count. <laughs> she well lived. If you go blind, co blind corner... Oh, that's very good. It won't, people. Yeah, four miles an hour in a place that this it's as busy as this. I think it's too fast because it's supposed to be there to replace walking, and we don't walk at four miles an hour. How all this horn blowing, shouting at us, get out of the way? They don't really have the right to do that. They need to meet, be more observant for the public that's going around them. We don't have to be more observant for them. Karen began campaigning two years ago when her then nine-year-old son was knocked over on his way home from school. What annoyed me first was the guy on the mobility scooter didn't even know he'd hit my son. So he sped off at the same speed he'd just knocked my son down at, which was obviously, to me, it seemed well over eight miles per hour. Um, went down to the local police station to report it and there was nothing they could do and I was just really shocked. And then the more people I spoke to, there was nearly everyone that knew someone that had been hit by a scooter. And I was thinking, and everyone's getting away with this, I'm not having this, so I decided to start my campaign. So I've been campaigning for a year to bring in a proficiency test. It's in the paper, one. not Yeah. Anybody's got common sense, darling, you know how to use them. My son got hit by one. You were on the road, that was your fault. Well, we wasn't. My son was actually on the pavement and it was a one-way street and the mobility scooter user should have been on the road, but because it was a one-way street, he decided to go up the one-way street on the pavement and hit my son. Your Just... son perhaps shouldn't have got in the way of the scooter. <laughs> you know, children are little swines, I have it with this. Nobody looks. Even adults don't look where they're going. Mm -hmm. I know you're not talking to the right lady, I'm afraid. <laughs> I think you feel I'm really against mobility scooter users and I'm not. I think that everyone using them should be using them correctly. The minute I saw you in the paper, I guessed what you'd be doing. Trust eventually. me, you will be and glad. I you well, that will child be... shouldn't have been in the way of the scooter. You will be pleased what I'm doing by the end of it. Because it is for I people worry, like it's you. It's going to cost me more money. <laughs> The Highway Code does ask scooter drivers to always give way to pedestrians. But with no enforced training or driving test, few people seem to take notice. Thanks for calling Mark Bates Limited, the home of Premier Care Insurance. Please hold and one of our advisors will be with you soon. One moment, please. OK, so can you just roughly tell me what happened in the accident? Um, well, I was driving down the road and a kitty jumped out. And I went to swerve and I hit a lamppost. It is only two inches out of the pavement, right? Yeah. And I heard something crack. Crashing into something is usually the most common one. Bollards, lampposts, walls, people, cars, <laughs> pretty, pretty much anything. So the front of the scooter is completely smashed up. Yeah. And bits have fallen off it. Yeah. Legally, scooters don't have to be insured, but a number of companies now offer cover for conscientious riders. So the information we've got is that you was at church and you've driven the scooter into the Baptist bath? What it was, um, I entered the church by a side door. Yes. So I knew that a new bishop was coming. OK. So as I turned the corner, I saw the new bishop standing. I thought to myself, oh, there's Bishop Jonathan. He looks young. And the next minute, I'm deep in water. Oh, bless you. So your eyes were on the new bishop, were they? Yes. And he was the one who pulled me out. Oh, was he? Of course, he got all his gown wet and everything. But they, <laughs> it was scary, though, you can imagine. But no, got, of course. The, um... 
church sent for an ambulance and they took me to the hospital and did an ECG and all the usual. Yeah, they checked you over. They did. With the waterlogged scooter taking the brunt of the impact, it was a £1,300 write-off. And would she like to fill out paper? But sometimes it's the rider who comes off worse. And, and what I had my gloves on and I pulled the, I pulled the throttle and it spun and it threw me out of the, it threw me out of the chair and there was a slope. And if it hadn't been for the, the wall being there, I'd have gone onto the main road and I bumped into the wall I've cracked my two knees and my shoulder. Oh, bless you. Are you OK? Um, but, um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in shock at the moment. I'm, I'm, I'm upset. Of course you will be. Don't um, worry. And, uh, Have you seen a doctor yourself? No, no, no. I haven't met a doctor yet. I'll see, I'll see how I am. Okay, well, but, don't worry. We can get this sorted out for you. I'm just setting the claim up over the phone now. I would suggest getting yourself looked at if you've hurt yourself. OK. He's got one gear. Slow. Dead slow. You have to time your trips to the toilet to perfection. Time is catching up with 78-year-old Peter. And of course, you'll get to here and you think to yourself, what have I come for? Yes, he is a traditional man's man, definitely. Yes. 233-65-660. That's my army number. Something you never forget, because if you forget, you don't used to get paid. You just had to go to the back of the queue again. When Peter began suffering with chronic lung disease, his wife Catherine took on the jobs he used to enjoy. I could scream. I can literally scream. Because my mind says one thing, my body says another. My mind says, Get out the road, I can do it. And my body says, no, he can't. And I know he can't, but it's a sh I shan't stop trying. The most difficult thing for him is not being mm. able to oh. get out and do what he wants to do. Now, you do feel old in this, I'll tell you. It's been very difficult for Thank him you. to adjust. He's having to rely on, on me at times. Um, and. I think he feels that he lo he's lost his independence. As Catherine struggles to push Peter's wheelchair, they've decided to consider the world of motorised mobility. I must admit, when I first thought about these scooters, and I thought, oh, to God, I don't get to that stage. They're fighting against it, actually. <laughs> Friday well, might lose his legs. <laughs> don't get old. <laughs> A lot of them, isn't there? My God, the Harley Davidson. Wow! <laughs> if you actually look, it, it's sort of... Is that a sat nav? <laughs> sat nav? Oh, it's a coloured TV. <laughs> if Peter wants to join the scooting world, there are two different types to choose from. The smaller size, restricted to the pavement, and the bigger ones. Oh, my God. <laughs> which can venture onto the road. Yeah. At the top end, these machines can cost £5,000. What does it feel like? I'll tell you what's happened. We've let steering lock on, haven't we? I'm going, to I'm, I'm, going, going, I'm going nowhere, am I? No. I'm thinking, well, I, I, I can't touch steering wheel. I did that to catch you out. Yeah, I know you did. I thought you'd, do. <laughs> you'd tell me anything. This is something I never thought would happen. Wow. Yeah. To, to all people that finish up in, in scooters or whatever, it's never going to happen to you because it's never happened before. No. There's a hell of a shot when it does. Reality has to click in. Now, it's not a quick sale, it's not a quick fix. You get a nice piece of equipment and hopefully you'll go away, you'll, you, you'll enjoy use at scooter, it'll benefit you in life. You know, it's a, it, it's a lifeline.
Peter may be reluctant to jump on the scooter bandwagon, but he's in the minority. <laughs> For many, they're a must-have accessory. And second-hand models are changing hands for as little as £65. Oh, dear. That young lad up there, his dad's got a scooter. And he walks, he walks miles. But then one minute you see him on a scooter. <laughs> hey, up bet. A lot of people don't need them and get them anyhow. There's no wrong with them. Did you follow on? <laughs> Alan bought his first scooter three years ago. After several upgrades, he splashed out on a £4,000 Vita 4 road model that tops out at eight miles an hour. Although drivers are supposed to slow down to four miles an hour when on pavements. The Speedy Consaurus, that's what we call him. It's it, Alan. <laughs> Speedy Consaurus. Move that scooter out of here. Good up, morning, Dylan. Desperate, Dan. That one's too big and it goes too fast for him. He'll run people over him. Uh, it's only a little one, that one. Only about six mile an hour, that one. He may be happy to point the finger, but Alan's had a run-in of his own. I've only knocked one down so far. There's a cafe just up here. It's not bothered because she's got mobile phone. She doesn't know where she's going. <laughs> she all right? And, well, she was all right. A lot of people criticise people with mobile scooters. Said they shouldn't have them. You can do this, you can do that, you can do this as well. If I can do it, I'll do it. If I can't, I won't. I've been suffering with epilepsy since I was six months old. So... Now it's got it, it's got worse, so that's the end of story. Well, got me one, Charlie. Across town, 34-year-old Emily bought a scooter four months ago. <laughs> a single parent to 10-year-old Ben, Emily suffers from multiple sclerosis. I was diagnosed at 22, started when I was 21. The whole life I had of me, and now look at me. I was housebound before that. That was, that was how bad it got. I, I couldn't walk. I was using Ben as a walking stick. It sounds awful, but he had to keep me up like... <laughs> hey, right, sir. The scooter may help her get around, but she's not the smoothest of drivers, so she signed up to a course at LifeWise. I want you to put your scooter in the exact same position as this one. It's not a scooter, it's thunder. <laughs> right, thunder. Right, Emily. I can see that you've got one or two scrapes down the side of thunder down there. And uh, how, how, what, what was that through then? A, a, a brick wall. A brick wall, oh dear. Right. Oh. <laughs> I've done my driving test six times. Uh, unfortunately, I failed all six. So. <laughs> Where are you going? Here, come back this way. Emily's Achilles heel, one of several Achilles heels, is reversing. Sorry, just stop that. Stop. Come towards me. There's this overwhelming compunction to keep doing this with your handlebars. Yeah. Steer the direction you want to go. That's better. Start reversing to the shops. Okay. Or reversing not all the way to the shops. I know somebody else. Do, do 20 <laughs> yards. Do 20 yards every time you go out in reverse and see how it goes. There we go. There we go. There we go. I've got that. 
With reversing still a concern, Steve from Parkgate Mobility has brought round something to help. Do you struggle to turn your head round a lot? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. stiff neck and things. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. About there, I think. Yeah, about there. Right, what are you actually looking at now? Are you looking I'm at looking me? I'm looking at your face. Well, yeah. that's no good. <laughs> yeah. Good looking as I am, you need to be looking up floor where you're going. Yeah. Yeah, can you see me all right now? Yes. Yeah? Keep your head looking forward as you would normally be driving. Yep. All right? Yeah. And now just glance with your eyes. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Added visibility should that leave Emily well. safer on the roads. <gasps> oh, don't go down there. <laughs> After a bit more practice. <laughs> In Derby, Karen's campaign for compulsory training has over 6,000 signatures. Hundreds of people have contacted her about their own run-ins with scooters. It's open! Karen! Hello! The latest is 81-year-old Eileen. Okay. I was going shopping with Vivian. We were going to have our eyes tested, actually. And we'd stop to look at a gentleman who didn't seem well. Mm. And then right at that moment, the scooter hit me, the basket hit me, and the next thing I know was on the floor. It just came out of nowhere. Mum didn't stand a chance, it hit her in a hip. Um, well, it was Gosh. sort of hip level. And she went down completely. She didn't move for quite a long time after that. She, we had to have the ambulance and paramedics and oh, God. they had to treat her on site for um, pain, severe pain, we couldn't get her up. She was on the floor for about an hour. It's a freezing cold day, it was just before Christmas. Yeah, so, so it affected your Christmas as well though, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. Mum was in hospital all over Christmas and New Year and then subsequently she was in hospital for three weeks. Eileen's pelvis had been shattered and she needed a partial hip replacement. That's exactly what I said earlier. 16 months on, she's still struggling to get around. So how do you feel about the whole incident now? Are you angry, bitter? I used to get cross, because I used to think, this has held me up, you know. I'm fed up with this, I, I don't want to be like this. The things that I used to do, obviously, I'm not going to be able to do again. But it's ongoing, you know, you just have to keep going. It's a shame because I think the scooters are wonderful things. Yeah, definitely. They're giving people that a chance. Yeah, extra bit of freedom. To be a little bit more independent. It just really upsets me. And mm. there's no laws, nothing can help us with this. Mm. And this is going to happen to somebody else mm. and somebody else mm. after. And it's going to affect and change their life. In South Yorkshire, the emergency services are called to nearly 10 scooter crashes a year. No one knows how big the problem is nationally, as no official figures are collected. <coughs> Hazel's on babysitting duty for the latest arrival, Anya. They call me Nanny Barmy. Nanny Barmy, because I'm crazy. No doubt this one will call me Nanny Barmy. <coughs> Why you? Hazel is one of 10,000 people whose health is so bad they get their scooter paid for through disability allowance but changes are coming to the benefits system. Can you pick up and move a half litre carton full of liquid? Within the scooter community, there's a real fear that people will lose their vehicles. Can you pick up a large, light object, like an empty cardboard box? I'll fight tooth and nail to keep my independence because nobody's going to take it from me. Nobody's going to take my independence away from me and I'll fight the bloody governments every inch of the way because that is my lifeline and I will not let go of my independence, come what may. Across the country, 
thousands of people may be fighting to keep their scooters. But in North Wales, Gloria Brown's journey has come to an abrupt end. I don't use it anymore. It's just there rotting, really. I'm too scared to use it. I know when I have this replacement kneecap, I'm going to need a scooter, but there's no way I'm going to go on that. There's no way I'm going to get caught again. I've got osteoarthritis in the neck, back, spine, hips, knees. I've got to have a knee replacement. That's my next operation. What, what was it like when you first got your mobility scooter? Actually, it was fantastic because I then had a life where I could actually go out and see people do things, enjoy, actually enjoy life to the full. Changed my life. I'm up. It was a big case here in North Wales. It was getting near Christmas time and I'd gone in for some milk and some bits and bobs. I'd actually stopped at the milk counter and was sat on my scooter talking and I was hit from behind. I hit a flatbed truck which then went into the shop assistant. I asked her if she was okay and I went up to the desk they have there. I told them and asked them to log it in the book that there had been an accident. And I just went home, I never thought any more about it. Gloria later received a letter from the shop assistant solicitor claiming damages for injuries to her knee. As she wasn't insured, the case went to the civil court and Gloria was judged to be responsible. Money to be paid under the judgment or the order is £16,588.64. £5,600 to the claimant and the rest of it was to go to a solicitor. At the time of the accident, Gloria was living with her elderly husband. Since then, they've split up and she's moved into a B&B. &B. There's no way I can pay it. The only way that this could be paid is if they kick my husband and his daughter out of the house, sell the house and take the money. I just really can't see any other way out. Gloria is not alone. Good morning, Mark Bates Emerson. How can I help? The majority of riders aren't insured, with accidents and claims increasingly common. Both pedestrians and scooter users are vulnerable. And then give you a call back when I've got all the information. All right, okay. So you shot forward and accidentally went into a lady. It just all happened so quickly. No, I can understand that. No way I could stop it, and then. then I just feel so guilty. Oh, it's, it's all right. OK, don't, don't get upset about it, all right. Everybody has accidents, OK? Here's a selection of the largest claims that we've paid out uh, in recent times. And you can see, just on this spreadsheet alone, there's over 30 people with claims uh, well above £10,000. The largest claim was £102,000 on a single incident. This was a collision between a mobility scooter and a pedestrian. Um, we had another one of £83,000 where uh, our, our customer ran over a lady on the pavement. Um, then there is a scooter that pulled into the pathway of a car. This form of insurance should be made compulsory. The public need protection 
and certainly the users of scooters need protection. On the pavements, pedestrians are a common victim of rogue scooters. But on the roads, scooter drivers are the ones in a more precarious position. So you were driving along on your scooter and then what happened? I yeah. parked in the middle of the road to go across yeah. to the other side of the road onto the pavement. Right. And this car came round and I could see him coming towards me. He was on the wrong side of the road, but I thought, it's going to stop. And he didn't, and he ran straight into me, on the scooter right round. And it smashed all the fronts of the scooter. Okay. It didn't hurt me. I'm, I'm just, you know, they hurt. said shocked. Okay, yeah. that, that's the main thing, isn't it? This is the worst one I always remember. The lorry was reversing and the motor traffic was all waiting, but he just undercut all the traffic and went underneath the wheel. I think that was a driver error. I personally think <clears throat> they should have a test to go on the road as car drivers being responsible. And it's not just themselves, it's causing accidents for others. Like, that could have been very different, you know, for other people. So I personally think they should have some kind of test. With scooters using the roads, there are collisions that people don't walk away from. The police don't routinely collect figures, but back in 2004, at least eight scooter riders died. A man driving a mobility scooter has died after suffering multiple injuries in a crash with a bus. Um, this is in Burton-on-Trent, which is not far from where I live. There's an inquest opens on the mobility scooter death of someone in Oxford. Um, an OAP who collided with a reversing car while driving on a mobility scooter, and this is recent. There's no end of them. It's just so upsetting that how many deaths there is. Coroners investigating the deaths have asked the Department for Transport to look into extra legislation. Karen's been forwarded the Secretary of State's response. We have no immediate plans to make this mandatory because we lack comprehensive evidence that the use of a mobility scooter vehicle as a whole is a major public safety concern. They, they just don't see what's going on in front of their own eyes. To think that, yeah, I've sent my petition in and nobody's listening and I've put all them hours and work into it and people have took the time out to write private letters to me and it's just completely being ignored, it makes me really angry. People always say, oh, they'll listen when someone dies. Well, someone has died. There needs to be a change in the law. In Pinkston, Peter is still unsure about joining the scooter brigade. In a, in a scooter, it's a privilege to mix with the pedestrians. So you shouldn't try to run them over or run into them. Or be ignorant to them. Like, God, I've seen it. I've seen it. You'll get some people that's totally, I call totally ignorant. They, they, they have a right. <laughs> they have a right to be on the pavement. They have a right to be step aside while I get past, you know. No, you haven't. You have a right to walk like everybody else, but you can't, so you run a buggy, so you take your time. I don't think any of these big ones should be on the pavement anyway. They're made for the road, they should stop on the road. It's like asking me to be in my car on the road, pavement. Because they are big, aren't they? Yeah. They've only got to give a bit of a squirt and they could be into somebody. If he is going to buy one, Peter doesn't want to make the same mistakes as some of his fellow riders. So he signed up for the safe driving course. You've got a high and low here because this is a class three yes. machine with eight and four mile an hour. When you press them, it goes to the maximum that you set here and here. How, how long have you had yours? Yeah. Well, I've never been. I've been on a golf buggy, but that's totally, totally different. Do you know what this thing reminds me of? My stair lift. Mm.
Peter might not want to admit it, but after a few hours in the driving seat, him and his scooter seem like a good match. Turn it another way now. Well, there's a thing. Wow. Wow. Perfect. Thank you. Switch off. Switch off. Pass. 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 With the new benefits changes coming in, Hazel's been forced to justify why she needs a scooter. Her carers have written a letter in her support, but it's also revealed for the first time just how ill she is. If Hazel goes out, she needs her, her mobility scooter. Her walking distance is approximately, approximately 10 yards very slowly. Hazel is now receiving palliative care and maintaining her current quality of life. God, I'm on, you know, palliative care. I know what that means. There's nothing more they can do for me. Um, it, it's sort of end of life care. It's scary. I wish I hadn't have got to know. I think it's not the stuffing out in me, you know, that you're looking outside, it's a lovely day. People are milling about, you you know, and you just think, God, I might not be here, and it just suddenly hits you. There you go, done it. There we go. Across town, Emily is having second thoughts about her scooter. In eight months, I've basically put on about two and a half stone for not walking around. It's a nightmare. And the thing is, when, um, when I was younger, before I was diagnosed, I used to go out walking a lot. It was what I did, but I can't do it anymore. That, that's another example. Um, you get somebody a lot older than me that can walk perfectly well. I should be doing that. It's like... The shoes on the other foot, if you know what I mean. But oh, no. <laughs> I know I giggle a lot and I laugh, but it's, a lot of it's nervous laugh. But underneath, I, I'm dying many inside. I just think, oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> I view um, scooter users to be in their 60s upwards. I'm too young for that. I really am too young for that. It's been. Have a good day. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Although Emily is unlikely to give up her scooter, she's resolved to get back on her feet more. Right, come on, Storm. <laughs> the first step is a daily regime of once round the block. Well, I'm seeing a physiotherapist, um, and he's trying to get me so. Um, more independent when we're walking. I always said the day my legs give up on me will be the day I give up on them. I've always kept that. I'm not giving up on them just yet. <laughs> I'm not undetermined. Despite his many reservations, Peter is taking the plunge. He's decided to stay away from potentially dangerous roads by opting for a pavement-only model. I had to respect everybody else around me, it's a little bit difficult. Well, not difficult, it's, it's, it's something we've got to get used to. OK. Fantastic. Fantastic. Cheers. Well... It's taken a lot to get to this stage, quite honestly. I knew it would come to this eventually. Absolutely wonderful. 
does make a difference after you've walked that far, you're beginning short of breath. And it's nice and easy to get around. Of all, I'm keeping up with him now. You know, it'll be drive me here, set it up, and bye bye. She's still with me. Peter may be happy, but the scooter has brought Catherine some independence too. <laughs> It's going to be wonderful, this is. I can do what I want to do. <laughs> I can look at the home furnishings while he looks at the boring stuff. <laughs> Excuse me, garden lawn edging. Like duck to water. No effort. Just no effort because I'm not walking, am I? Wonderful. Whitley Bay on the northeast coast. I'll just give a chip. Good. Beautiful. It's a rare day out for 58-year-old Hazel and her sister Maggie. Getting away, you know, today, and I'm absolutely loving it. You just forget everything because you're having such a lovely time. It's been a big change, Mag, because we don't get anywhere, do we? No, together. not really. I do know I'm very ill. I just know I'm very ill. Um, I don't know if I'm going to wake up tomorrow, the next day, the week after. I don't know. You can't say. With every day precious, Hazel's come to seek out a magical place on the scooter map. I'm looking for a scooter. Yeah, it's better yeah. than paying out for tax, isn't it? Whitley Bay Hire Shop customises mobility scooters into a wide range of vehicles. Is this a eight mile? Is it? I think I need a bit of WD-40 on it. It's gone all right. With the Jeep back in the workshop for essential repairs... Meow. Hazel opts for the low rider. It's me Harley Davidson, this. <laughs> Isn't it lovely? <laughs> and you don't think sometimes, you know, you've been dealt uh, an unfair hand. But then again, you just think some people are worse off than you. And they are. Some people don't live to be 30, 20, whatever. I've had nearly 60 here. But oh, I just love life. Yeah, I do. Without a scooter, Hazel and thousands like her would never get the opportunity to live their later years to the full. There may be problems, but while that holds true, the mobility scooter revolution will just keep gathering speed. Sunshine, chase those clouds away. I know you're gonna brighten up the